How you doing, folks? Well, uh, allow me to introduce to you a bit of uh, gas turbine engine heritage. This is a Honeywell slash Garrett 85 series auxiliary power unit. And this is old school engineering at its absolute finest. And um, basically what this is, it's, uh, it's an APU off. Uh, this particular one would have been fitted to a uh, Boeing 737 Classic. And um, it is, uh, would have been the predecessor to the uh, Honeywell 131-9B uh, in, this, in this particular instance. There were many different types of uh, Honeywell 85 series APUs, and this is just one of them in one particular form. They're all broadly similar, to be honest with you, though. Um, this uses a, a two-stage a two uh, two centrifugal compressor feeding a, a single uh, combustion can uh, with a uh, which which then runs a uh, radial inflow turbine so it is not an axial turbine like what would be in a 131 and um, so it's uh, it is particularly old school let's have a better look at it here so we're in the test cell here now at the moment. The noise you hear at the background, in the background is the fuel boost pump. And um, this here you're looking at is the generator, which is capable of producing about 60 kVA of electrical load uh, or electrical power. Uh, this is your air inlet here. You can see the uh, crossover ducts. And then that'll be one side of the first stage compressor and the other side of first stage compressors there. Your, this is your turbine plenum over here. And this is your bleed outlet here as well too. So the, this is actually a bleed engine in so far as the, uh, there is no separate load compressor the uh, compressors that uh, supply the air to the combustion process also supply the air for the aircraft. Hence why there's two compressors in this instance. Uh, this is the combustion the combustion can here as well too. Single fuel atomizer, igniter plug there, and you have an old school, uh, really old school um, fuel uh, fuel control unit as well too, which is very much uh, uh, mechanically controlled using flyweights and diaphragms and all that as well too. I'm not going to get into all that now. There's your oil pump down there as well, and um, you have an oil cooler in there, and starting motor here, so obviously electrically started. Then this is your cooling fan here as well too, which um, has to be said are prone to uh, leaking oil from the shaft, which is not an unusual problem with these APUs. Uh, this is obviously the accessory drive gearbox then as well too, and then this here is your oil tank. So it's not a, uh, this would be a dry sump I suppose you could call it. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's basically a walk around of it. Um, these are insanely noisy and quite heavy on fuel by comparison to their um, the one three ones. Um, they produce roughly four hundred and fifty equivalent horsepower um, versus the one three ones equivalent six hundred equivalent horsepower. So um, they they'd be a little, little bit lower powered, and yet they do use more fuel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my ear defenders on, and I'm going to give my trusty assistant a. Uh, Thumbs up and we're going to watch this thing start. Okay, so it's uh, motoring down now, and um, yeah, uh, they're air shatteringly loud. Uh, now that was it, uh, without uh, putting any sort of a pneumatic or electrical load on it, that was basically idle. Now, uh, APUs tend to operate at 100% RPM uh, all the time, so uh, I think the RPM in these is, if I'm not mistaken, it's 44,000 RPM. So uh, they spin fast as well too. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, 
just uh, just wanted to give you a quick insight into these. Uh, I, I particularly like these particular engines, and um, they're uh, they're a nice piece of uh, nice piece of machinery. And these uh, particular APUs were the first APUs to be fitted to commercial aircraft back in the 1950s. So that's the sort of a, a time frame you're talking. Now they've been modified over the years uh, to what you see now. This one, this particular unit probably was built in the 1990s. I, I didn't actually check, but uh, when you go back to the 1950s, they were broadly similar design. Uh, still, you still have your two stage. Um, two-stage uh, axial uh, or two-stage radial outflow uh, compressors and single-stage radial inflow turbine and um, so uh, yeah no they wouldn't have been as powerful as well too but uh, anyway look thanks for watching folks and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in a future video